How many times have you dreamed about a new beginning? Something new and exciting. Throwing away the old boring daily routine. I don't know you, but it happened to me plenty of times. But today, today I'm very excited because I find myself exactly where I was in my dreams. I'm in Bogota, starting my five months adventure around this country. And I could not be happier. Bogota is a monstrous 10 million people city in the heart of Colombia, 2,500 meters above sea level on the Andes mountain, the third highest capital in the world. The history of this city goes back centuries before the arrival of the Spanish conquistadors here in the 16th century, establishing their colonies around South America. This was in fact the land of the Muiscas people, a pre-Hispanic civilization who had their capital right here and it was called Bacata which in Chipcha means the Lady of the Andes. That's why today we call it Bogota. It's been studied that around 500,000 Muiscas used to live around the country before the arrival of the Spanish. As you can guess, they basically disappeared during the colonial period. There's no better place to start visiting Bogota than La Candelaria, which is the old colonial heart of the city. It's not clear when Bogota was founded, but the main theory says that it was founded here in Plazoleta del Chorro de Quevedo in the 1538. A cute round square with a fountain in the middle and a small white church on the edge of the square. It was the place where Gonzalo Jiménez de Quesada, the conquistador and founder of the city, established his military headquarters. This place takes the name from uh, the priest Quevedo, who built a source of water somewhere around here Unfortunately, there's no trace of this source of water right now because it's been destroyed by a landslide. Today you can find cafes, students and a lot of tourists hanging around. This place is also famous for the murals. You can find them pretty much everywhere when you walk around here. And they are basically part of the landscape. When you walk around here, it's not uncommon to be approached by locals trying to sell you a drink called chicha, which is a fermented alcoholic beverage made with corn, uh, water and sugar. Today they included in the mix other things to make it more appealing, like fruit and alcohol. One of the places where you can try chicha is Mercado La Concordia, which is the little main market of La Candelaria. So this is the chicha. It's made with fermented corn and water and sugar. Originally, it was made by showing the corn because the saliva used to help the fermentation of the corn. If you think about it, it's pretty disgusting. And nowadays, the fermentation process, of course, is different. Vamos a probarla. Wow. I wouldn't know how to describe it. It's not pleasant, it's sour. Because the flavor is not that good, let's go and try one of these variations of chicha. Chicha de sabores, which means different tastes of chicha. A lemon, strawberries, with mandarin, with passion fruit, with lulo, and with uva. Salud! No, wow, that's nice. 
You know, Chicha has a really interesting history. During the 40s, after the Bogotazo, the government wanted to declare this drink illegal, blaming it for the destruction of the Bogotazo. But the truth is that the government wanted to push for another alcoholic drink coming from Europe, replacing Chicha. And the drink was the beer. Now let's leave behind us El Chorro de Quevedo and let's go for a typical Santa Ferreño breakfast. Santa Fe de Bogotá was the original name given to Bogotá. That's why Santa Fe, Santa Ferreño. Of course there are many things that people here eat for breakfast, but I want to show you three things more traditional. The first one is the changua. The second one is going to be chocolate Santa Ferreño. And the third one is going to be tamal. And that's the changua which is a soup made with milk, bread, cheese, uh, eggs, and onion. It's honestly heavy as hell, but it's also very tasty. It's something that you wouldn't eat for breakfast, though. That's all cheese. Si la vida es un carnaval, es más bello vivir cantando. And this is the famous chocolate Santa Ferreño. It's hot chocolate, almohada, normal bread, and the cheese. You just cut the cheese and you put it into the chocolate and wait for it to melt. Mm. The almohada, you just dip it into the chocolate. Mm. It's like dipping a savory croissant into chocolate. If you keep going downhill, you will eventually reach Plaza de Bolívar, one of the most iconic places of La Candelaria, one of the biggest squares here in Colombia. And like many of them, there's a statue of Simón Bolívar right in the middle. Simón Bolívar is probably one of the most important historical figures here in South America. It's because of him that the Spanish colonies were able to get their independence from Spain at the beginning of the 19th century, forming later on the states of Colombia, Panama, Venezuela and Ecuador. The statue of the Libertador, the Liberator, was the first public monument of the city. This was the mansion where Simon Bolivar used to spend his days here. In 1828 he was sleeping here in his residence with his lover and a group of people showed up to his door to kill him. His first instinct was to face them. His lover, wiser than him, told him to look for a different solution, escape through the window. And the window is that one. Plaza de Bolivar has a strong symbolic value also because there are different powers sharing it. On one side there's the Congress which is followed by the Alcaldía, the City Council. Next to the City Council there's the Palace of Justice. Right next to it the Catedral Primada, hosting the tomb of the conquistador Gonzalo Jiménez de Quesada, founder of the city. Next to the Catedral Primada there's a little chapel and that's the only remaining building dating back to the Spanish period. The Palace of Justice has been destroyed twice. The first time in 1948 during the protests following the assassination of the political leader Gaetan. This protest took the name of Bogotazo. The second time it was destroyed in 1985 when the guerrilla group M19 occupied the palace. At that point the army of course intervened. There was a fight and during the fight more than 100 people died and the palace was burned to the ground. Just in case you're wondering if it's safe for me to walk with a camera along the street of La Candelaria uh, because I know it's a common question. I googled it a lot before coming here. Uh, I'll tell you, I've been here two weeks. I never, never felt unsafe. This doesn't mean that things don't happen. Things happen everywhere. Just there's no reason to be anxious when you walk around. People are kind, always keen to help. In case you come around, just enjoy your stroll around La Candelaria. Also, there's a lot going on around the streets of La Candelaria. Street vendors everywhere, music everywhere, lots of people walking. Such a nice place to hang around.
Agostino, mamoncillos. Granadilla, chirimoya, chirimoyas. Mamoncillos. Another thing uh, people from Bogota have for breakfast is tamal. Muchas gracias. Gracias. I also ask for arepa con hogao because you know it's always time for arepa. Oh. Oh, qué rico. Oh my god, look at this. So tamal is made with corn flour. Usually uh, they use meat inside. In this case it's vegan, so instead of meat they use mushroom and carrots and some kind of herb. It's all wrapped in banana leaves. Let's go on and put some spicy sauce on top. Be more. Oh, there's also chickpeas. Wow. Amazing. Another thing you can do here in La Candelaria is visiting the Gold Museum. It's very interesting. With just 5,000 pesos you have access to more than 60,000 pieces of gold crafted by the Muiscas. This place is so special that in 2018 the National Geographic classified it as one of the best history museums in the world. One of the best crafts is the Muisca raft, representing the ritual that created the legend of El Dorado. And if you don't speak Spanish, no problems, there are English translations everywhere. Amigos, that's it from La Candelaria. I hope that you learned something new. You got some new information of things that you didn't know before. I strongly recommend you to come at least for a couple of days. Before coming, I was reading comments online. People suggest to visit this place uh, for one day, just one day or to skip it, but my advice goes in the opposite direction. Stay here at least for a couple of days to absorb what this place has to offer. Thank you for your company and thank you for being with me until the end of the video. I really hope to see you in the next one, once again from Bogota, because we are far away from being done with it. Hasta luego, amigos.